So Hashcash is a, a proof of work. So the idea is that your computer would do some calculation and find a solution to a problem and then it would sort of create a postage stamp, a small uh, string of numbers and you could show that to somebody else. You could email it to them, you could show it to them and they can verify it very cheaply. So the interesting thing about a proof of work is that it's uh, potentially expensive to create. It takes a lot of compute time and yet very cheap to verify and that everybody can verify it. And unlike digital signatures, there are no private keys. So there's no person with uh, special uh, sort of advantage or capability to create a signature. Anybody can create a proof of work. Yeah, in the, in the beginning I was uh, working on um, operating a remailer. So it's a way to have privacy on the internet. And the servers were operated by volunteers and I was one of these volunteers. And what would happen normally uh, is people would spam through the remailers and it, it was a nuisance, right? And so normally what people do with spam is they try to sort of deter it or reduce it by blocking the people that send spam. So they'll block the email address, they'll block the IP address of the server. But because this is an anonymous remailer, you don't know who the sender is. It's private by default. So it forced me to think about spam in a different way. And so I was thinking the, the real problem, if you, if you back up, is that uh, there is no cost to sending an email. Very, very low cost. And so I thought it would be good if you could pay with an electronic cash or you know, with pay money a small amount, you know, a few cents to send an email, then it would sort of solve the problem because it become expensive to send relatively and or not free to send. And possibly the verifier could receive some money to compensate for reading the mails or operating the servers. But making electronic cash system is difficult. So, but I still thought, well, maybe I can create a cost that's not respendable. And in the sort of mathematics of hash collisions, there's a known phenomenon called the birthday problem. And that is just referring to a party, a group of humans uh, with, with birthdays on a, a given day in the year. And the question is, how many people have to be at the party before there's a 50-50 chance that two people have the same birthday? And it's called the birthday paradox because the number is smaller than you expect. It's 23 and people assume it would be like 365 or half of that or something, but actually it's 23. And so with hash collisions there's something similar, which is if you keep hashing messages and the, you know, the possible hash results is trillions and trillions, then it can be virtually impossible to find a birthday collision in a hash function, i.e. two messages which, when hashed, give the same digest. Uh, but, you know, my thought experiment was, well, that's interesting because if somebody did this enormous amount of work, which would, or got very lucky, you know, which would take thousands of years of all the world's supercomputers, anybody could immediately verify it with today's computers on even a very low-powered computer or a smartphone. And so, that struck me as an interesting building block. And so what I did to create a stamp is I designed a way to reduce the amount of work, make a smaller problem that's still verifiable, but that you could compute you know, in a minute, or you could choose how much work to do. You could say, well, I'm gonna work for a minute on average, and I should be able to find one you know, with 10 digits, or if I don't work for an hour, then it's gonna be 12 digits, let's say. When, when your computer is doing proof of work and you can do it by hand, it's just very slow because humans are very slow computers. It's uh, performing a hash function, so it's taking some data and doing a calculation on it, which results in a kind of checksum, so a long sequence of numbers. And the digits are basically deterministically random. In other words, if you, get, if you hash the same data, you will arrive at the same checksum, but if you change one letter, one character of the message, the checksum will change all over the place. All the numbers will change randomly. And so the hash cache challenge, like the, the way it's designed, is your task to find a certain number of leading zeros. So it's a long sequence of numbers, and you want, let's say, you know, 10 zeros at the beginning. And in order to do that, if it's in decimal, um, 
that is 10 billion tries until you find that, right? And your only way to arrive at a, a checksum with 10 zeros is to try on average 10 billion times. So you just keep trying, 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 trying. And you can try, you know, lots of people can try at the same time, and the first one to find it can announce it. Oh, I found a solution. And that's, that's what Bitcoin does. So how to verify, you'd use the same process as finding it, except you now have the data. So if somebody says this is the, uh, the, me the message, the string of characters that I hashed to get this high proof of work output and they, uh, they can just hash it and see, wow, it has 10 leading zeros. That must have taken a long time to create. 